All right. Hey, welcome to your favorite intermediate algebra class. It's good to have you today. We're going to talk about real numbers and number operations. We're going to some of our objectives. We're just going to look at the uh, real number line using real number nine and use properties of real numbers. So let's start out with uh, this diagram here of the real numbers, okay, and subsets of the real numbers. If you look down here, the smallest um, kind of funky looking N, if you will, that is the symbol for the natural numbers. Okay, the natural numbers, if you can see that right there. That's the natural numbers. So that's your counting numbers that you learned in grade school. One, two, three, da, 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 da. Okay? The only difference between the natural numbers and the whole numbers, right there, if that, uh, designated by that W there, is zero. Okay? So the natural numbers are a subset of the whole numbers. Okay? You notice that all those... Uh, numbers right there would fit into the whole number, so it's a subset. The natural numbers are a subset of the whole numbers. Well, the whole numbers are a subset of the integers, okay? So if you look at 0, 1, 2, 3, notice that those are, all those whole numbers are in that set of integers. That funky looking Z right there is your symbol for the integers, I-N-T-E-G-E-R-S, okay? So the integers are all your whole numbers, Plus, you got to consider your negative numbers, okay? And then we get to the rational numbers, okay? You see that uh, funky-looking Q right there? Well, your rational numbers, by definition, are, are numbers that can be written as a ratio of two integers. Okay, so you look at the three-fourths. You notice that the number on the top, the three there, that's an integer. And look at the number on the bottom, the four, that's an integer. So it has to be able to be written as an integer, and that's a rational number. So you look at this negative 3 over here. I, I included negative 3. Negative 3 is, is a rational number. Well, can you write negative 3 as a ratio of two integers? So is it truly a rational number? You say, sure, I can write that as a negative 3 over 1. So you notice that the, um, the natural numbers, the whole numbers, and the integers are all subsets of the rational numbers. Now, if you were to write these... Um, rational numbers, if you're going to gonna express them as decimals, they're going to either terminate or repeat. So let's think about like, uh, for instance, two-tenths, right? Or one-fifth, same thing. One-fifth or two-tenths. If you were to write that rational number, it's 0.2, right? <clears throat> so you notice that that decimal stops, it terminates. Or it could repeat. So we know like uh, one-third one-third is also a ratio of two integers, so that's a rational number. So 0 0.33333, 3, 3, 3, 3, so it repeats, okay? So any rational number, if you were to punch that into your calculator in decimal form, will either terminate or repeat. Now let's talk about the irrational numbers, okay? So like pi, you know, the old pi, 3.14159, that's like the most famous irrational number. And you notice, if you ever had a teacher that had that, uh, pi the number written out across you know all around her room or whatever it keeps going there's no pattern to it it just keeps going on forever so that's an irrational number so an irrational number there are real numbers that are not rational so when they're written as decimals you just got to remember as a decimal this thing will not terminate or repeat a pattern so like for instance square root of two um, square root of two is one point one 1.414213562373131, blah, 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 blah. Keeps going, okay? Does not repeat a pattern, nor does it terminate, okay? Negative square root of 3, that's another irrational number. We'll talk about another um, very famous irrational uh, number as we go through this course. Okay, now the real numbers. You see that R up there? It yeah, has funky... Look in R right there. That's a symbol for the real numbers. Uh, real numbers are all the rationals and irrationals. So the set of all rational and irrational numbers. Okay, so if you pick any of these numbers we've talked about, they're obviously a real number. If someone was to ask you, you know, name the sets of real, no, you know, subsets of real numbers to which, let's say, the number... 13 is a member. They say, well, 13 is a natural number. It's also a whole number. So it's also an integer. 
13 over 1, so it's rational. And of course, it's a real number, too. Okay, if you're to name all the sets to which that one belonged. Let's do another one. How about um, square root of 7? Well, square root of 7 is an irrational number. And if it's an irrational, it's also a real number. Let's do another one. How about square root of 9? Well, the square root of 9 is actually 3. So you should think about this in simplest form. Uh, you know what? Let me change this. Let's go negative square root of 9. Negative square root of 9, or negative 3, well, it's not a natural number. It's not a whole number, right? The first thing that it is is an integer. And then it's a rational. Then it's a real. Okay, so that's how you could name these sets to which it belongs, okay? All right. Now let's graph and order some real numbers. So here we go. Square root of 7, negative 2, negative 7 thirds, 5 halves, 0.75. All right, let's start, you know, that, that square root of 7. You're probably thinking to yourself, a little number sense here. Square root of 7 is between what and 1? Well, you know that, let's think about uh, 0. 0 is square root of 0. 1 is the square root of 1. 2 is the square root of 4. 3 is the square root of 9. 4 is the square root of 16. So I know, hey, the square root of 7, you know, is, is pretty close to square root of 9 or 3, right? So it's between square root of 4, square root of 9, probably a little closer there to that square root of 9, and if you were to actually punch that in, you'd get 2.646. Okay, so there's your square root of 7 right there. Uh, with negative 2, let's put that on the real number line. We're like, hey, no problems with that. There's our negative 2. How about negative 7 thirds? You say, well, 7 thirds, what is that? 7 divided by 3 is 2, remainder 1, so negative 2 and 1 third. So negative 2 and a third, let's say I split this up into thirds. There it is. There's your, there's your um, negative 7 thirds. Or negative 2 and 1 third, same thing. Okay? 5 halves, 5 divided by 2 is 2 and a half, 2.5. Okay, so if I, I'm right there, 2 and a half. So there's our 5 halves, 5 divided by 2. Of course, if you don't remember that, hopefully you do. It goes twice, right? 4, get the 1. So I got 2 and 2 and 1, the remainder, over the divisor. 2 and a half, right? Okay, been a long time. Been a long summer, right? 0. 0.75. Where's 0. 0.75? Well, 75 one hundredths. Is 0.75, right? 0 0.75, 75, 1 hundredths, um, or 3 fourths. Both those go into 25, right? Same thing. So 3 fourths of the way up to 1. So there's our 0 0.75. So if we were to order these now in order from least to greatest, we would then go from the bottom, negative 7 thirds. Then we got negative 2, then we got 0 0.75, then we got 5 halves, then we got square root of 7. There it is ordered from least to greatest. Okay, let's talk about properties of addition and multiplication here. So first of all, <clears throat> in the real numbers, in the real uh, numbering system, we have a closure property. Okay, so the closure property of addition says, hey, guess what? If I add two numbers, A plus B, let's say it's 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is 5, right? Well, guess what? 2 plus 3, which is 5, is still a real number. So if I add two numbers, I still get a real number. If I multiply two numbers, so a times b, 2 times 3, which is 6, I still get a real number, don't I? So that's the closure property of addition, of addition and of multiplication. Now let's talk about the commutative property of addition. So um, commutative is just saying, hey, you know what? 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3 is the exact same thing as 3 plus 2, right? So that's the commutative property of addition. And you also have a commutative property of multiplication. 2 times 3 is the exact same thing as 3 times 2. They're both 6, right? So you probably remember a lot of these from Algebra 1. You get your associative uh, property of addition. So 2, so let me give you an example. The associative property of addition, let's say 2 plus 3 plus 4 
is the exact same thing as 2 plus 3 plus 4. And if you remember order of operations, you should do the grouping first. And you're like, oh yeah, those are still 9. 9 equals 9, doesn't it? So that's a commutative property. I'm sorry, the associative property of addition. And then you have the associative property of multiplication. Okay, similarly. Okay. Now let's talk about... Um, erase this real quick. The identity property of addition. Well, you have uh, this interesting zero number, which is the additive identity, which in other words, if I take a number, A, so let's say it's uh, 5, what do I have to add to 5 to still get 5? And I say, well, 0, because 0 is my additive identity. Okay, so 5 plus 0 is still 5. Okay. Now let's talk about the multiplication the identity property of multiplication. I say, well, if I'm in um, multiplication, the operation of multiplication, who is my multiplicative identity? In other words, if I take 5, I multiply 5 times what to still get 5, to still get the identity? Same thing, right? I say, well, 1, because 1 is my multiplicative identity. So 5 times 1 is 5. Right? I'm looking right here. 5 times 1 is 5. Okay, and then I get my inverse property of addition. If I want to get 5 plus what gets me back to 0, well, the additive inverse would be the opposite of 5. 5 plus negative 5 is 0, okay? And then I got the multiplicative property, the multiplicative inverse. So 5 times 1 fifth, 5 fifths are 1, so I want to get back to my um, multiplicative identity. Okay, and then we got the old distributive property. I'm sure you're quite familiar with that. A times B plus A times C. All right, let's look at some operations with real numbers. So if you remember difference means subtract the difference of negative 6. The difference of negative 6 and negative 12 is, of course, that's the same as negative 6 plus 12, negative times a negative positive there, right? Minus a negative number, if you will. Of course, you get 6 there. The quotient, quotient, if you recall, means division. So the quotient of 12 and 1 half, right? So 12 divided by a half. Keep change flip, if you recall that. So you got 24. 12 over 1 times 2 over 1 is 24 over 1. Identify the properties shown here. So it looks like here you got 5 times 3 is the same as 3 times 5. So if you notice, the 5 and 3 just switch places. So it's like A times B equals B times A, right? So we got the commutative, commutative property of multiplication. Okay. Let's look down here. 5 times the quantity 3 plus 2 is 5 times 3 plus 5 times 2. So you know that as the distributive. Okay. All right. See you guys in class.